It's February here in Western Oregon, and we're finally starting to get a few little pockets of nicer weather that are suitable enough for some cold weather, winter camping and backpacking. I am going out backpacking and uh, actually hiking camping tomorrow morning. I wanted to show you what I will be bringing. Let's address the elephant sized backpack in the room. Um, this pack is gigantic, I am fully aware. I'm relatively new to backpacking. A lot of my gear is very inexpensive, so it means it's heavy. And um, after last year's hypothermia scare, I really want to do my best to play it safe. So I think the best case to show you everything here is to just go over some of the big stuff and then unload everything onto the table because this gigantic pack doesn't even fit in the frame. Starting off here with the tent though, this is a just cheap blue tarp from the hardware store and uh, inside of it rolled up is the Coleman Sun Dome two-person tent. Super cheap, definitely a weight penalty attached to it, but it's, uh, it's done me pretty well so far and I definitely hope to upgrade to something a little lighter and higher quality in the future. Getting that out of the way, we have the pack here. This is the Teton Sports Explorer 5000. It's a 65 liter pack. I bought it on Craigslist for 20 bucks. Um, again, just kind of goes to show you, you don't have to spend a ton of money to be able to get out in the outdoors and enjoy yourself. Now you're gonna have to carry a little bit more, but uh, you're still able to make it work with a pretty small budget like myself. Okay, so I have everything laid out here with the exception of my sleeping bag, and that is a huge reason why my pack is so big. Um, I have this Coleman zero degree synthetic sleeping bag. It is very warm and surprisingly well built for the 40 or 50 bucks I spent on it, but it takes up like 60 or 70% of the pack. It's insane. But, um, you know, I'm going to be going out into the forest at near freezing temperatures and it's rainy. You know, the Chilmuk State Forest is a temperate rainforest, so a lot of it can be some pretty brutal conditions and, um, you know, a lot of risk of hypothermia and a lot of other things if you don't stay warm and if you don't stay dry. So um, I'm definitely taking my precautions because taking the bus to get there as well. Um, so I won't have any cell service and I won't have a way to get out if I I find myself injured or um, you know hypothermic or anything like that there's a bus that comes by twice a day so I will have to catch one of those times or wait throughout the whole night so always better to play it safe first off I just have my food here in um, it's called an op sack op sack it's just a basically a super thick uh, reusable plastic bag that's smell proof Really great to help prevent critters from getting into your food. Um, there's also bears, uh, black bears and cougars in the area that I will be. So you wanna make sure and get all of those smells in something that's going to be smell proof. And then I also do have a little bear hang kit here. Um, this was just a bag I had around the house and then I have a smaller bag to use as a rock bag to throw over a tree branch and then some paracord to get everything attached and hoisted up. So that's my hanging system and my food. Um, I don't have anything too fancy in here, just some like instant mashed potatoes, ramen, oatmeal, you know, all of the good cheap backpacker food. And um, in terms of water, I have two smart water bottles and I know they are plastic bottles and I talk so much on the channel about how you shouldn't use these. Um, I reuse these for multiple years. Maybe it's not the best for my health with leaching plastic and all of that sort of stuff, but they're really lightweight and um, because of my obnoxiously heavy other items, I need to save weight wherever and whenever I can. So I use two of these for my water and then I have a Sawyer squeeze for um, filtering because there's not any running or potable water at the place I will be. I need to get my water from the river filtered out so it's safe to drink. So Sawyer squeeze with two smart water bottles. There are tons of rivers around, so I don't need to carry much more than this. While we're on the topic of food, I have my little cook system. Uh, this is something I was able to get surprisingly small and light with spending very little. Uh, the pot that you see here is just a cheap pot I found on Amazon. Um, it actually comes with a bowl set too that clicks on the top of it, but I don't really have a use for a second container when I'm out there, so I just leave that behind to save weight. Uh, what I do though to kind of build a new lid and add some extra function, 
I have a handkerchief, um, just a rubber band here. Sometimes these can be really useful for the most random things when you're out on the trail or you're out camping. So great way to fix it. And then I just have a little handkerchief that I use as a cook towel. And because I don't have a lid or any other pot, I have a little piece of foil that I fold up here. Also works really well if you have a campfire. Um, you can do some cooking on the campfire with a piece of foil. Very handy, very useful, and practically no weight. Um, next up, this was a uh, recent gift from my sister. She has been browsing my Amazon wish list, but it's the uh, Tokes Titanium Folding Spork. Very lightweight. I really wanted something that folds so I could keep everything contained in this little pot. So Tokes Titanium, and then uh, just a Bic lighter safest way to get my fuel lit and all of that um, because i don't use you know the mountain house and all the dehydrated meals i do eat out of my pot so i need to clean it out so just took a regular sponge cut off a small chunk gets the job done to uh, to clean it up well enough for the stove i have this brs titanium stove it's uh, 25 grams and I've used this thing on a few trips now and it's very inexpensive and has worked really, really well for me. I've been really happy with this and it just kind of unfolds like that. Super simple, super lightweight with the, uh, the price and the weight of this thing. I really have zero complaints with it. And then uh, last step in the pot here, I just have my uh, cooking fuel and that fits, that fits nicely in there. And uh, yeah, it just makes for a nice, small cook setup uh, without the fuel this all comes in at half a pound so that's my cook setup so we went over water cooking food how i hang up the food moving on next uh, we have my sleep system i already showed you my giant coleman uh, zero degree bag attached with that i have the Perea Outdoor Products, this is the Recharge XL. Um, it's a little heavier, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think it's somewhere around 24 ounces, but it's a really heavy insulation. I think the R value is 4.7, so a really great sleeping pad for the shoulder seasons or winter camping or backpacking. With that, I also have an inflatable pillow, bit of a luxury item, but uh, I'm a side sleeper and really just need that height for my head to sleep comfortably. Talked about this on the channel before too. The uh, Trekology Aleft 2.0 inflatable pillow. This thing is very light, very inexpensive. I think it's $17 on Amazon right now. Um, I don't use it a ton for regular travel, but I have brought it with me for couch surfing and stuff, but where it really shines is uh, outdoors and in these situations. Next up, I've got my ditty bag. I have my little Leatherman multi-tool. This is the Squirt PS4. Super handy, has a ton of functions, you know, knife, pliers, all sorts of things in here. Pretty inexpensive too, and a lifetime warranty, I believe. Um, been really happy with this since I got it last year. I have a little first aid kit. It was a Coleman tin here that I bought, but I actually swapped out a bunch of stuff in here. Took out some of the excess and then also added, so it's, a, it's first aid for myself, but it's also first aid for my gear. So I have some patch tape in here, you know, ibuprofen, band-aids, um, just some basic first aid. And I have a battery. Um, this is the Anchor PowerCore 2 Slim 10,000 milliamp hour battery. I gotta make sure and keep my phone charged as it's my main GPS to get around when I'm out there. Uh, for the battery too, I have my just iPhone cable. Another luxury item that I'm bringing is uh, my Kindle Paperwhite. It's about eight ounces to add to the pack, but uh, because I'm not doing a ton of miles and I'm just going about and planning on doing a lot of relaxing at my campsite once I get set up, I'm gonna read some books, um, just enjoy the quiet and catch up on uh, catch up on some reading that I haven't done for quite some time little space blanket, um, you know, emergency blanket, really important. If uh, something were to happen, you know, always good to have a backup sleep system. You know, I could sleep with this out in the cold and survive the night essentially. So you want to make sure and have that. A little bit of sunblock. Um, we are supposed to have some sun out there. I'm hoping <laughs> I burn super easily. So I bring this little uh, Nalgene one ounce full of sunblock, mostly for my face, because I'm going to be in like gloves and hats and long sleeves and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, toothbrush. This is from Muji, uh, folding toothbrush. I have this for my like regular traveling, but bring it backpacking obviously as well. I just love that it folds. It makes it so much easier to pack. Um, this goes for yeah regular travel too. I love this thing. 
I have some fire starter. You know, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get a fire going. We just got through a really big snow and ice storm a couple of weeks ago, so I'm assuming everything's gonna be really wet, but um, I brought some fire starter in case, and also, again, just good for a backup emergency. And then uh, for the bathroom, because it's not a campsite, um, I do have to just go out in the woods. <laughs> so I brought some soap with me. This also works as toothpaste. I can wash my dishes with it. It's the uh, Dr. Bronner's unscented soap. And then um, have some toilet paper. And this is the Vargo Dig Titanium. You gotta dig your holes and then you gotta go. And I have an extra bag in here cause you gotta load it out too. Uh, leave no trace principles and all. But yeah, that's everything in the ditty bag though. I do also bring with me a camp chair. This is about a pound and a half. Um, it's kind of just a cheaper alternative to the Helinox Chair Zero or the REI Flex Lite. I have my eye on those for upgrades in the future, but the uh, the first thing I need to be upgrading is definitely gonna be that sleeping bag for sure. Last but not least, we have clothes. Um, I have a couple of extra pairs of socks. Uh, these are darn tough uh, quarter length hiker socks. Um, these are incredible. I'll have one pair on me and then these two to swap and change out. You know, I tend to get sweaty feet even when I'm managing, you know, I can be freezing cold and my feet will still sweat. So important to make sure that you keep dry feet so you can stay alive. <laughs> I also have these liner socks, uh, really great to prevent blisters. They're just really thin, can help add some additional warmth as kind of a vapor barrier in between you and your main, you know, insulating sock. Um, these were very effective last year when I picked them up. So these combo, you know, swap out and uh, let the other dry. I also just was able to uh, to get these. Um, huge kudos to Artelect. Uh, they reached out and offered to send me. These are Merino wool base layers. They are incredible. Um, I've been super happy with these. We got a big snow and ice storm a couple weeks ago, so I was finally able to uh, get out and test them, even though I wasn't camping and uh, really lightweight, you know, the top and bottom set comes in at nine ounces and they are just startlingly warm. Huge thanks to Artelect for sending these over for me to try. Um, you know, I've used them a couple of times when it was snowing a couple weeks ago, but I'm very excited to get back out into, uh, into the forest and really put these through their paces and see. I, I think it's gonna be really incredible. I have another pair of socks just strictly for sleeping. So if those are wet, I can go to bed and put on a nice fresh pair of warm, dry socks. Very important for a good night's sleep. And then I have a uh, Merino sweater here. This was actually from Banana Republic. I got this on super clearance for like 20 or $30 a year or two ago. And uh, Merino stuff can get really expensive. And I really didn't have much need or desire for this for like regular day wear, but like a thick Merino sweater like this is invaluable for, uh, for camping and backpacking. You know, because even in the summers here, you know, when you get into the rainforest and the lows get pretty low and it's wet and rainy. So it's kind of something you need to worry about year round, but especially in February when I'm getting out in the cold. And I just have a uh, too thick pair of fleece sleep pants. So I have a nice warm set of clothes to sleep in. I did remember I forgot a few things in the brain of my pack. So that's just kind of that top quick access pouch at the top of the bag. A pair of gloves and a hat. These will probably be on pretty much the whole trip anyway, but packing them in there so I don't overheat when I'm hiking into camp. Then I have a headlight. Uh, this was just a really cheap headlamp I got. Uh, before my car camping trip to uh, the Seaslaw National Forest, if you remember that video from a few years back. It's a little heavier than ideal. I've been looking at that Nightcore NU25 to replace this eventually, but you know, I think I have bigger weight concerns before I start worrying about ounces and small things like this. And then I have my rain shell. It's the Marmot Precip. Not the lightest, but I've had this thing for five years now and it's really uh, never done me wrong. You know, I used to hike, I used to hike, I used to walk, you know, four to six miles a day getting to and from work before I started working from home. So it, uh, it's been out quite a bit with me and I've never had a single issue with it. So definitely a good buy if anyone's in the uh, market for a rain jacket and doesn't worry too much about the weight. But that is everything. Um, definitely, it seems like a lot less when you take out the gigantic heavy stuff. So don't judge me too much. Like I said, it's really important to make sure that you're being safe if you're going out there in those questionable 
climate situations. Yesterday, the weather did not look like it was gonna be good. Check this morning, it looked like it was gonna be good. And I knew I was gonna be kicking myself if I um, didn't get out there because good chance it's gonna be another couple of months before I really have the opportunity with the weather to get out again, you know, until I invest in some better rain gear just so I can be prepared for the wet and the rain, or until I can get a car and go out into the drier desert. Um, you know, I'm pretty limited by the public transit and my tight budget for now, but this setup has been working really well for me and uh, just getting everything dialed in, doing a lot of learning lately, and it's been a ton of fun. So I know it's a bit of a deviation from the normal types of videos. Let me know what you think though. If you wanna see more outdoor videos, I've had a few people tell me that they are interested. So planning on probably doing a few more this year, but thank you all so much for watching and I will uh, update you by the time this airs, I will be back. So I'll let you know how the trip goes. Uh, thanks so much, have a good one.